What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel today. I'm making the hardest, most difficult video that I've ever had to make. And it is the top eight Nissan Infiniti cars ever made. Let's get right into this one. Of course, this video is so hard to make because there are so many options of Nissan or Infinities to choose from. And we're just doing the top eight, but let me know at any point during this video that you'd like uh, what your favorite Nissan or Infiniti is. I'd love to know uh, what you think or what stands out to you in terms of styling characteristics, power plants, things of that nature. Let me know again in the comment section below. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and hit the little bell notification as well. I'd appreciate that very, very much if you haven't already. Uh, but let's get right to business. So, of course, today, like I said, we're doing the top eight Nissan or Infinities. Um, Let's just start with number eight, and I think this one might surprise you, or maybe not. Uh, but my number eight selection for the best Nissan or Infiniti ever made is actually the 2015 Infiniti Q50. Now, it's not just because I drive that particular car, uh, but there's a lot going for it. It was a dramatic change, a dramatic improvement over the G37 platform uh, in terms of styling, uh, major upgrades. I don't like, okay, of let's just get this right out of the way there are some shortcomings of course uh, we maybe would have liked a little better transmission or uh, we would have liked an lsd in the q50 uh, but as far as a sport inspired luxury car goes uh, the q50's got some great great body lines it's a beautiful looking car i've never heard anyone say that the q50 is an ugly car um, and it's paired with a tried and true power plant in the VQ37. Uh, it's uh, knock on wood, such a durable, robust platform, uh, been around forever and established itself as a reliable, dependable, uh, um, you know, relatively peppy and powerful power plant. Uh, and I think the combination of styling uh, with that uh, iconic uh, power plant, it just makes the 2015 Q50 stand out among the rest. Uh, so that's why it is my number eight pick. My number seven pick, coincidentally, is the Nissan 370Z. A uh, lot to be said about the 370, uh, but it is, it's a favorite, and it's, uh, it's an icon, again, uh, in the Nissan Infinity world. Uh, it's got really cool looks, and I think it represents the Z badge very, very well. It's got, obviously, a six-speed uh, manual transmission option, uh, it's very nimble, uh, great body lines, again, true to that Z heritage, uh, and it has really established itself again as an icon in uh, the Nissan Infiniti world with many, many uh, generations of the 370Z on the road. Uh, it's hard to pick exactly which year range uh, the Z is the best, uh, but the 370 definitely deserves a position in the top 10, in fact, in the top 7. For my number six pick, it is another icon, and that is the Nissan 240SX. Uh, the S13 won Japan's Car of the Year in 1988, and uh, Nissan debuted the SR20DE and the SR20DET in 1991. Uh, it has really, again, established itself as an icon in this world, and is being even more popularized in the world of drifting, uh, with the help especially of folks like Adam LZ. Um, they're becoming harder and harder to find. They're becoming very, very sought after, and the prices are literally skyrocketing. Uh, to find one in clean condition these days, you got to be ready to pay a pretty penny. Uh, so if you if you are uh, looking uh, for an S13, uh, uh, a Nissan 240 here in the United States, um, get one now. Get one uh, sooner than later, because eventually they're going to be uh, really, really expensive or you know just that much harder to find. For number five, you may or may not be surprised by this, but I actually had to separate the S lines. Of course, the S13 is uh, its own special car, uh, but I would say for number five, I'm putting in the Nissan S15. Uh, it's just really, there's just something special about it, particularly the 2002 uh, S15, uh, last year of the S line. I really didn't want to, to do this. I tried to just include, uh, you know, certain models. Um, 
but I couldn't help it. For number five, I had to choose the Nissan S15. Uh, I know I have the S13 as number six, uh, but the S15 deserved to be separated uh, into its own line and its own position within the top 10, within the top five, uh, essentially. Uh, only sold in Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, there's just something about something that you can't have or you don't have access to. I'm not sure if I said it already, 2002 is the last year of the S15, uh, but again, it has sort of established itself as an icon. I don't mean to keep using this term, but uh, it should be, it should go without saying that all of these that make it into the top eight essentially are icons because they are uh, some of the best cars ever made by Nissan. Uh, and the F S15 is no exception to that rule. The S15 had some sleeker body lines than the previous S generations had some modern updates as well and the spec r version of the s15 had a helical lsd six-speed manual transmission and had a little more robust more substantial chassis really making it ready for the track it deserves its own position in the top 10 top five and number four my number four best nissan infinity ever made is the infinity q60 can you believe that? Now, some people, I'm sure, after seeing my number eight being the 2015 Q50, they were probably saying, well, why didn't you make it the, the 2016 Q50, right? The one with the 3.0T. Well, the reason is the Q60. The Q60 is the reason that the 3.0T Q50 did not make this list, and I say it for this reason. The 2015 had the styling of the Q50, in my opinion, uh, they should have either used the 3.0T in the 2014 Q50 in the, the beginning of that new body style, or they should have waited for the body styling to change when that 3.0T platform was ready. Um, hence the reason I chose the Q60 to have its own line uh, at number four in the top eight Nissan Infinities ever built. Uh, we obviously know the capabilities of 3.0T and you cannot de deny that beautiful styling of the Q60, which is why I chose it as the silhouette for my Speed Culture keychain. Uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's elegant and aggressive at the same time. Uh, it's so sleek, it's so futuristic, yet uh, so contemporary. I mean, it's something that looks really good right now, even compared to other cars in the class. 30 years from now, that car is still going to, to look good when we look back on it. And there's something to be said about that in and of itself. Uh, but when paired with such a highly potent power plant uh, and a slightly better seven speed, man, uh, seven speed automatic transmission, uh, it's really... Uh, it really is a good package. Now, are there shortcomings? Yes, of course. I, I feel like the interior could have been uh, updated, even though it's slightly better than the Q50, in my opinion. Um, it could have had an LSD, could have had a dual-cut transmission, it could have have, had a six-speed manual option. Uh, it, it seems typical of Nissan to do a lot of things really, really good and then just neglect other parts. I mean, if you want a really sort of uh, aggressively styled sports luxury car like the Q60 looks to be, uh, you would expect some of these key features like a dual clutch or LSD at least uh, if you're not going to have a six speed or a, a manual transmission option. Uh, it needs a couple of those other things, but uh, nonetheless, it's a beautiful car. It has a, a very, very uh, potent power plant, like I said, with tons of potential. We're seeing this 3.0T make, you know, 400, 400, 450 wheel horsepower pretty easily uh, with, uh, with just some basic uh, modifications and a tune, and, and that is, is impressive. And for that reason, number four on this list. And here we are, the top three, my number three best Nissan or Infiniti ever made, and that is the Nissan Fair Lady Z. Uh, the Datsun 240Z here in the United States, uh, the grandfather of it all, right? The inspiration for the new Z, uh, the popularity of the Z line in general. Uh, none of that would have been possible without the Fair Lady Z, the OG, right? So uh, I think it is well deserved to be placed at number three here on the list. Uh, it has that classic styling, the long nose, the, the stubbed tail end, uh, the aggressive lines, the car is super sleek. Uh, it's reminiscent of some of its uh, European contemporaries, but it is 
totally Japanese, and I, I love that about uh, the Fairlady Z. Working with its counterpart, the Datsun 240Z, uh, they were able to sell 520,000 units uh, over its nine-year span uh, of this original uh, Z generation. According to NissanUSA.com, it is the record for sport cars within a single model. Again, that's 523,000 units. 520,000 units sold uh, in a in a nine-year run, which is super impressive. Um, so again, for that reason, uh, a combination of reasons, really, uh, the Fair Lady Z is number three on this list. Number two, number two, which, what do you guys think it is? What do you think the number two best Nissan or Infiniti ever made is? Well, I'm gonna tell you right here. It is the R32 GTR. What? Now, I absolutely love the R34 GTR. It is my favorite out of the Skyline line, uh, but we owe so much to the R32 GTR. Uh, it's what put the GTR name back on the list in uh, 1989, uh, 1990. Um, it just really kind of sets the, set the stage uh, for what is to come for the GTR badge. And I think that's an important element to remember when we're talking about the greatest cars, doesn't matter the brand, uh, the greatest cars ever made. Um, they have to have uh, you know, some sort of status uh, that sets them apart from the rest. And although the, the R34 is like super aggressive looking, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful car and it, it can certainly stand on its own two feet in a number of ways. Uh, the R32 again is kind of what brought the GTR back uh, to, the, to the minds of the people. Uh, the R32 Skyline, or a variation of it, was the winner of the Japanese Touring Car Championship and various other races uh, in the early 90s. And uh, again, even though the R34 is more aggressively styled, uh, it had improved handling, more power, uh, faster on the track. Uh, it owes, really, its success to the success of the R32. And I think that is why I put it as the number two on the list. Again, number two. R32 GTR. And number one, here we go. Number one, drum roll please. My number one pick for the greatest Nissan Infiniti ever made is the 2021 Nissan GTR Nismo. I had to, I just had to. I didn't want to, trust me, I did not want to put a, a modern GTR's number one on the list as the greatest Nissan or Infiniti ever built, uh, but I, I but I just I had to. It has been rated as the number 24 car in the 200 dollars to $300,000 price range. Again, this is the GTR Nismo, uh, so it's up over $210,000. Uh, it's the number 28 best supercar. I don't know how many supercars there are, but number 28, I don't know. Maybe there are only 30, that wouldn't be good, right? But uh, nonetheless, 600 horsepower, uh, dual clutch, six speed transmission, all wheel drive, 480 plus foot pounds of torque, moves this relatively heavy 3,800 pound car uh, from zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds, which is super impressive. You, you can't deny it, it, it is quite the machine. Uh, the 2021 GTR Nismo is better than the prior years, uh, had a slightly improved transmission from what I can see, uh, upgraded turbos, uh, and the suspension was tweaked a little bit as well, uh, giving it some better handling capabilities and just kind of overall performance. Uh, so that's why I selected the 2021. Um, but there is a lot of hate out there. There's a lot of hate out there when you read some, uh, some stuff from the auto bloggers and the auto magazines, uh, they just really, kind of talk down to it or talk down about it specifically in regard to its kind of slow evolution uh, in styling upgrades, especially when they compare it to contemporary supercars like the R8 and things of that nature. So uh, I, I can see that, but if you get inside a 2021 GTR, it, it's still impressive to me. Uh, but again, as I said earlier, leave it to Nissan to do a few things really, really well and then just sort of, sort of neglect others so um, you know the performance of the newer GTR is is certainly there and maybe it could have updated uh, given it a facelift maybe on the exterior as well as the interior but 
again, you can't deny it. It is a beast and it has carried the GTR name badge very, very well. Uh, and its predecessors would be proud of it. Uh, definitely deserving of the title Godzilla. Obviously, a bunch of these cars on this top eight list could have been flip-flopped or moved from one position to another, or moved around, shuffled around. Uh, they're all very well deserving of being in the top eight, I feel, in my opinion. And again, feel free to leave in the comment section below what your opinions are. But guys, have you seen the 2022 GTR? Oof. I think it's pretty sharp, but it is generating more hate. Uh, some of these auto bloggers and, and auto magazines, Car and Driver in particular, said it doesn't look as expensive as it is. And that's a little bit of a jab. But again, that kind of goes back to uh, Nissan not really changing all that much. You could look at, um, you know, the R30, the, the first R35 GTR, compare it to the 2022, and they're very, very similar. Uh, it really hasn't changed all that much. and, and you could say that's a shame, or uh, maybe you enjoy that fact. Nonetheless, I think it's a badass looking car. It's obviously uh, going to perform very, very well. Uh, but for that reason, uh, for what Car and Driver has said, I chose the 2021 uh, because it doesn't seem like there's all that much change for the 2022. So that's where I stand. That's my top eight. Uh, those are my favorite. Mm, not my favorite. I guess it's a little bit. Uh, subjective but uh, those are my top eight Nissan Infinities ever built I don't know if you guys agree or disagree but again let me know in the comment section below I appreciate you watching I appreciate the continued support onward and upward for Speed Culture Studios and I hope you guys are all moving onward and upward as well we'll see you in the next one